In conservation of linear momentum, we have two types of collisions. Okay, we have two types of collisions that we need to know the uh, similarity and differences between these two types of uh, collisions. We call them the elastic collision and also the inelastic collisions. So, what uh, is the what are the similarities between these two collisions and what are the differences? between these two type of collision okay let us first look at the similarity okay elastic and inelastic collision elastic and inelastic collisions both of them the total momentum of a system is always conserved okay conserved uh, before and after collisions okay that means the total momentum before collisions, which is the initial total momentum, must be equal to the total momentum after collisions, or we call it the final momentum. Okay, uh, so we can say that um, for one dimension, okay, let, let, uh, because we have one dimension and two dimension, for one dimensional case, we use uh, just the m1 u1 plus m2 u2. Uh, equal to m1 v1 plus m2 v2 uh, that's for one dimension we can use this formula okay uh, but two dimension we cannot uh hold on a second okay since uh, uh momentum is a vector right first of all i want to emphasize that momentum is a vector okay just want to write it over here Right, this momentum is a vector. Okay, so uh, if talking about two dimension, okay, if talking about two dimension, uh, we need to resolve into two components. Okay, uh, we need to resolve into two components, x component and y components. Uh, why we need to resolve into two components? Because momentum is a vector. Okay, vector has direction. Okay, has direction. So you must resolve into two components. Uh, so for for x component, we just use m1 u1 x uh, plus m2 u2 x. You okay? I already mentioned this in the earlier videos. Okay, uh, m1 v1 x uh, plus m2 u uh, sorry m2 v2 x. Uh, for y component, we also have the y component m1 u1 y, right? And just continue plus m2 u2 y equal to m1 v1 y plus m2 v2 y uh, so for one dimension we use uh, we don't have a, a comp only have one component only have one component so you can directly do like this but two dimension you need to resolve into two components x component and y component and do separately okay that's for momentum okay uh, total moment initial momentum equal to total final momentum okay so um okay the total momentum is conserved is true for both elastic collision and inelastic collision okay it's true for both and then the next the next similarity is okay this is the first similarity the second similarity is the total energy is con of the system is conserved before and after collision ah the total energy is concerned as uh, energy is a scalar quantity okay no direction uh, so uh, energy uh, energy is conserved because we know that energy cannot be destroyed energy uh, cannot be created or cannot be destroyed uh, but it can but it can change can change form okay uh, from one form to another form yeah maybe it changed from uh, kinetic energy to sound energy or to heat energy to light energy yeah to potential energy so uh, energy cannot be destroyed but it can change to another form okay so overall the total energy is always conserved so energy cannot be destroyed uh, it only can change uh, from one form to another form so no matter how uh, the total energy is always conserved okay before collision and after collision so the total energy before collision must be equal to the total energy after collisions yeah uh, 
uh, maybe uh, during the process of collision, the energy can change from kinetic energy to uh, other type of energy like sound energy or heat energy. Okay, but energy can never be destroyed. Yeah, can never be destroyed. Uh, so uh, maybe uh, what I can say is uh, maybe before before collision, it is hundred joule of uh, kinetic energy. Okay, after collision is still hundred joule of total energy, but this time is a mixture of uh, kinetic energy plus sound energy uh, plus heat energy. Okay, so in terms of the total energy, total energy is still hundred joule. No, no energy is destroyed. Ah, uh, no energy is destroyed. Okay, so for elastic collision and inelastic collision, the total energy is conserved. Ah, uh, total momentum is conserved. Total energy is also conserved before collision and after collision. Initial and final have the same momentum, same total momentum, and same total energy. Okay, so that's about similarity. Now let's talk about the one key difference between okay it only has one difference one key difference between elastic collision and inelastic collision how can we differentiate between elastic and inelastic we only uh, differentiate by this one key difference which is looking at the total kinetic energy ah so let's say if the questions uh, want us want us to determine uh, determine uh, is it is it uh, elastic? Is it elastic collision? Or is it in elastic collision? How can we determine? How can we determine? How can we uh, know whether it is elastic or inelastic? How can we determine whether it is elastic collision or inelastic collision? Uh, so we need to check. Check the kinetic energy. Uh, check the total kinetic energy before collision and after collision ah that's it we don't check the momentum we don't check the energy uh, we how to uh, determine whether it is this collision is elastic or inelastic the the answer is checking the total uh, the total kinetic kin, uh, checking the total kinetic energy uh, sorry checking the total kinetic energy uh, before and after uh, checking the total kinetic energy before and after then we compare we compare if before and after have the same total kinetic energy then it is elastic collision if the total initial kinetic energy not equal to final final total kinetic energy then it is inelastic collision okay if equal then it is elastic if not equal, then it is inelastic collision. Ah, that's it. Okay. So for elastic collision, the total kinetic energy must be conserved. But for inelastic collision, the total kinetic energy is not conserved. Okay. So remember, when the question asks us to determine whether it's elastic or inelastic collision, we check what? We check only the total kinetic energy before and after. We check total kinetic energy before and after. Yeah, check the total kinetic energy. So, um, okay, for elastic collision, uh, later I will show you uh, what kind of collision are elastic and what kind of collision are inelastic. Okay, first of all, uh, elastic collisions, the total kinetic energy uh, initial, okay, let's say uh, initially it has 100 joule of kinetic energy, uh, finally it also uh, has 100 joule of it maintain the same amount of kinetic energy 100 joule 100 joule 100 joule is just one example understand but in elastic collision uh, let's say initially it has 100 joule of kinetic energy but after collision uh, maybe during the collision uh, you hear some sound yeah yeah uh, like two snooker ball pop right uh, that means why you hear that sound why you hear that sound that means some of the kinetic energy of the snooker ball had turned to sound energy. Uh, so, 100 joule of kinetic energy of the snooker ball no longer maintained as kinetic energy, but some part of the kinetic energy had turned to sound energy. 
Uh, maybe so the kinetic energy just left with 80 joule of kinetic energy uh, whereas the 20 joule of uh, energy has turned to sound energy and this sound of en this sound energy is called the energy loss uh, energy loss understand uh, it, so energy can change to one form to another so part of the initial kinetic energy have been transformed to another form like sound heat or deformation uh, like you see car crash car crash uh, 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 after car crash you can see deformation on the body parts right so and then you hear explosion uh, you hear the, the uh, car crash sound so all that all those are energy loss okay all those are de when you deform the car also there is there is an uh, energy loss already okay uh, so um okay uh, so one thing about kinetic energy kinetic energy is not a vector quantity kinetic energy is a scalar quantity uh, scalar quantity so when talking about one dimension uh, two dimension two dimensional collision we do not do not resolve the kinetic energy into components okay uh, uh, no matter is a uh, one dimension or uh, two dimension we just use this one uh, kinetic energy okay let's say imagine imagine i have a uh, two ball okay ball ball one and ball two okay uh, collide okay uh, we, this one has uh, this is mass one this is a uh, Okay, this is a uh, mass two. Okay, this is a uh, initial velocity u one, u two. Okay, collide, and then uh, after collide, uh, uh, they uh, move uh, to to the other direction. This is v one. This is a uh, uh, v two. Okay, uh, v two. So, ah, uh, this is a uh, um, this is before collision. This is uh, after collision. Okay, before collision and after collision so um so uh, uh we if we want uh so when we find the kinetic energy okay kinetic energy uh so this is half m1 u1 square is the kinetic energy of the first ball half m2 u2 square is the kinetic energy of the second ball uh, this is before collision yeah this is a uh, before collision and this is after collision uh, this is the kinetic energy of the first ball after collision and this is the kinetic energy of the second ball after collisions so the total kinetic energy okay if talking about elastic collision elastic collision the total initial kinetic energy must equal to total final kinetic energy uh, so we use half m1 u1 square plus half m2 u2 square uh, equal to half m1 v1 square plus half 2 m2 uh, v2 square uh, so we investigate this uh, compare between initial kinetic energy and final kinetic energy to see whether they are equal or not if they are equal uh, if uh, left hand side equal to the right hand side uh, that means this is a elastic collision if let's say uh, initial kinetic energy uh, is not equal to the final kinetic energy uh, then it is inelastic collision Okay, so elastic collision they must have equal total kinetic energy before and after. In elastic collision, they must have uh, the initial total kinetic energy not equal to final total kinetic energy. In fact, normally you see the initial kinetic energy is more than always more than final kinetic energy because normally it is uh, uh, initially has more kinetic energy, final has less kinetic energy because the kinetic energy has changed to another form of energy like sound energy so for inelastic collision normally it is um, normally I, what I can say is the total initial kinetic energy must be more than the final uh, total kinetic energy okay so uh, back to the uh, back to the statement that kinetic energy is not a vector it is a scalar quantity so when doing one dimension or two dimension okay we uh do not let's say let's say we uh, do two dimension two dimension collision okay we know that uh, uh, uh for velocity it has 
uh, two components. But for kinetic energy, which is not a vector, we do not resolve kinetic energy into two components. Okay, we still use back this formula. We still use back half m1 u1 square plus half m2 u2 square equal to half m1 v1 square plus half m2 v2 square for two dimensional collision. Uh, we do not do things like, uh, we do not, uh, we, we don't do like, for example, for two dimension, we don't go to do like uh, half m1 u1 x square uh, plus half m2 u2 x square. Uh, plus half m1 v1 x square plus half m2 v2 x square and then uh, that's that's for uh, that's for okay uh, that's for x component uh, that's for x component and then the y component okay uh, sorry I better I just copy uh, okay let me copy all this uh, hold on a second yeah uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I copied already. Now uh, just throw this off. Yeah, uh, yeah, okay, just, just want to throw this off first. Okay, uh, I'm gonna put like uh, here x, x, uh, x, x is for x component, and this is for y component. Okay, ah, is this correct? Can we do, do we need to resolve the kinetic energy into two components? No, this is wrong. We do not resolve into components. In two dimension, uh, no matter it's one dimension or two dimension, uh, especially two dimension, we do not resolve into components because energy, yeah, uh, energy, uh, energy is a scalar quantity. Uh, kinetic energy is a scalar quantity. It do not have direction. Yes, uh, we can say uh, no direction. When no direction, you cannot resolve. Cannot do not resolve. We no need to resolve into components. Yeah, when no directions. So whenever it's one dimension or two dimension, we just uh, use back the original velocity. Uh, just 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 use. Uh, no matter it's two dimension, two dimension, we still use half m1 u1 square plus half m2 u2 square equal to half m1 v1 square plus half m2 v2 square. Uh, I will show example in the problem solving videos later on. Don't you ever do this. Don't you resolve the kinetic energy into two components because scalar quantity do not have components. Energy is just energy. It do not have x and y component. No. Okay. Kinetic energy is just kinetic energy. The amount of energy inside that object okay uh, so for uh, when you investigate kinetic energy you uh, in, you calculate the kinetic energy as a whole as a whole okay for kinetic energy but talking about momentum uh, momentum is a vector momentum is a vector so uh, for two-dimensional collision momentum you have to resolve into x and y component why? Because momentum is a vector. Vector has direction. Has direction, then you need to resolve into two components. Uh, but for kinetic energy, it's not, it's not, a, it's not a vector. It's a scalar quantity. Okay, so it do not have components. So you no need to resolve into two components. Okay. Uh, so that's it. I want to uh, say. So uh, to differentiate again, to differentiate between elastic and inelastic collision, we only look at one thing. We only look at one thing. Only look at the total kinetic energy uh, before and after. We compare before and after. If equal, it is elastic collision. If not equal total kinetic energy before and after, it is inelastic collision. Okay, I will talk more about this in the later video. Thank you.